Today on Nerd Out, Governance Snapshots. Welcome back to Nerd Out, the show where we take a look at Cardano. We break it down, but we don't dumb it down. Today we're talking about taking snapshots of the blockchain for governance purposes. So let's go ahead and dive into it. So utility is important to token projects. Um, most token projects, they'll start off, start off, they'll create a token, they'll start working on their project. They need some way to get to utility fast. Governance and voting is, is one good way to do that. Um, it gives very early community engagement and it helps set the project on a path, uh, good direction with the, that community engagement and community being able to give the project feedback as it goes. Um, so far yet, nobody's really completely solved voting on Cardano. There's a number of people working on it. Um, we're working on it at Drip Drops. I've heard they're working on it at, at Sunday Swap, and I'm sure a number of other projects are working on it. We've we've had a number of good experiments so far with governance and voting. You know, I think MinSwap has done some stuff. Uh, Sunday Swap did a did a vote a while back with some kind of voting on chain to vote for the Sunday Swap pools. Um, but nothing is really super good and, and completed yet. But I believe that we will very soon have some good off-the-shelf um, voting, cool, voting tools for Cardano, and they will be available, kind of just pick it up off the shelf. You need to do govern, governance voting with your project, with your token, and you'll be able to do that. And so that's kind of what we're talking about today is how do we solve the problem of how much voting power do you have? So you've got this token and you need to know a number of things. One, how much of the token is held in any given staked wallet on the blockchain? Um, so that's solving the first problem. That's fairly simple to do. But then you also have different layers of the onion. So maybe some of your tokens are held in a DEX liquidity pool. Well, those people still control those tokens technically, but they're not held in their wallet. So how do we snapshot those and give those people some voting power as well? Um, and then there's another layer to the onion, which is if they take those liquidity pool tokens and those are then put into a yield farm, how do we then snapshot those tokens? And we won't get into all of those today, but just this is to discuss that there are different layers to the onion. So you don't necessarily want to, you know, do things like punish people for doing DeFi with with your your token. So it's important to give these people voting power, even though they may not directly control it at the time in their their current wallet. Um, so both of the projects I'm involved in, both Drip Drops and Project Noom, they kind of need answers to these questions in order to hold fair votes. So this is what I've been working on this week. And again, this is just kind of a work in progress today. It's not something that's finalized. I'm just going to kind of show you where I'm at with things uh, with snapshotting. So in Firehose, we have a, a database schema of the ledger, and this is what I'm using for the snapshots right now. It doesn't have entirely all the information I need, but it has most of it right now. So the pieces it does have, it has everything about addresses, stake addresses, um, all the UTXOs on those addresses, and all of the um, native assets held on all of those UTXOs. So this is kind of the database schema. Now what it doesn't yet have is anything related to uh, datum value. So a lot of these DeFi protocols, they're storing some stuff in the, the datum hashes of the smart contracts that go in or out. And there's a lot of good values coming in and out of those. So right now I'm having to look at the datum hashes manually through Cardano scan, whatever, to pull some of that info out. But um, yeah, maybe in the future um, I can get that elsewhere, maybe through Koyos or DBSync something. Um, or I could update Firehose to actually sync all of that data into the and store that data in the database. So the first stage is how do we snapshot 
a governance token that's held in just a regular old staked wallet. So let's say you've gone to drip drops or you've staked with the Noom pool and you have some tokens and they're just held in your regular wallet. And so to, to get a snapshot of those, we're just doing a query against the Firehose database. And to do that query, we need the policy ID of the token, which is this AF21 for the DRIP token, and then the name, which is just capital D-R-I-P for the DRIP token. And we're doing a join across all those tables you saw before. So we're, we're doing a, a big inner join across all the tables and we're selecting only the stake address. So we're grouping by stake address. So any UTXOs that have drip tokens on it, we want to collect all those up and sum them all up. So that's what this first line here is, is we're taking the amount of tokens we end up with and we're running a sum command on it. And this is actually going to, you know, build a low-level SQL query, but this is, is the way I do it in, in the Kotlin code, just to kind of write the query at a higher level. So we're grouping by stake address so that the sum works, and then the drip expression uh, for a regular wallet here is that sum. So we're joining them all together, and then we're querying based on the policy matching and the token name matching on the ledger assets table. And then we're also looking at the UTXOs table and making sure that um, this particular UTXO is still unspent uh, because the database still keeps the data for some period of time after a UTXO has been spent. So we're making sure that that block spent field is null, so it means it's not spent yet. And we're also only looking at stake addresses. So if you hold, you're holding DRIP in an enterprise address, we can't do anything about that because you need a stake address in order to do the voting. So we're setting stake address is not null, can't, can't work with enterprise addresses. And finally, we're looking at the address type. Uh, the address type is that first byte of an address, and that tells us what type of address it is, whether it's a regular stake address, which will start with the byte 01 on mainnet. Um, it'll be 00 on testnet, I believe. Um, and then if it's in like a contract address that'll look similar, um, it might be 1-1. One, one. So we're not looking at anything that's, you know, any drip that's in a smart contract. We're just excluding everything but the regular staked wallets. And then we're creating a, a big map of stake address to amount of drip they hold. So that's kind of how we do it for a regular staked wallet and this is this is pretty good like this is the minimum we would need to hold any type of vote um, so we'll definitely at least do this for the the drip drops vote that's upcoming uh, probably in the next month but it might also be nice to get a snapshot of some of people who have their drip staked in not staked, but held in liquidity pools. If they're providing liquidity on a DEX, you know, with a Sunday ADA pair, uh, there's currently four different pools that people have created. They didn't just reuse the existing pools. So some of these have different fee levels. Some of them are the same fee level and somebody just wanted to make a pool for no reason instead of reusing an existing pool. But we're looking at the Sunday policy ID now and there's a couple of tokens, NFTs, that Sunday Swap uses. So um, the first one here is the token name. It's an NFT that represents the pool. So wherever this, uh, this NFT is sitting, that is the pool address, or the address that that token sits on is the pool address. You can kind of think it of as like a Sunday-specific ADA handle for uh, where that's located. And so it has this 7020 and then the number of the pool after it. So pool 53, pool 12, pool C3, and pool 5D01 are all the drip ADA pair pools. Whoops. And so we're gonna go ahead and loop over all of those, these Sunday pools. 
And the first thing we want to do is figure out where is that NFT sitting, that pool NFT sitting. And so that's what this first query is doing is what transaction and, and index. So basically what UTXO is that um, token sitting on, that, that NFT sitting on. And so we do that query. It's very similar to um, what we did before, you know, we do the the joins. We don't have to join all the tables because we're only trying to find the UTXO, making sure it's not spent so that we don't get duplicate records. And then we end up with just the transaction ID um, and the index. So that represents a UTXO and we're logging it out here. Next, we want to find how much drip token is also stored in that UTXO because that same UTXO that holds the pool token will also hold the big bucket of drip tokens that are locked in that contract. And so we're basically doing the same thing, looking up that exact UTXO, but this time we're filtering for just the drip policy ID and the drip token name and just looking at straight up how many tokens are on that UTXO. So that's, that's the first bit of information we need to know is what is the total bucket size of everything that's in this particular Sunday pool? So to continue this, the next thing you need to do to figure out how much control somebody has over that pool is you need to figure out the total supply of LP tokens, liquidity pool tokens in that pool, and then do a snapshot of how much LP tokens does the person have in their personal stake wallet. So the first thing here we're, we're going to do is do a query and look at the whole blockchain and we're, we're essentially looking at how many total LP tokens have been, been minted. And that's what this first query to get the total supply gives us. So Sunday Swap is, is um, they mint as they go. So they mint LP tokens as needed instead of just creating a big bucket of them. And that's fine. Um, that's how they that's how they do it. It makes things really simple for us on our end because we just say how many tokens are out there. That's the total size of um, LP created. And so we'll print that out. The next thing we want to do is we want to look up the equivalent of drip based on how much LP token they hold in their wallet. So we're going to look up and do a sum of all of these LP tokens. We're gonna to do query based on the Sunday policy ID and the Sunday LP token name, looking at the user's wallet, making sure it's a regular staked address, but then we're gonna do some math on it. We're gonna take that sum of all the LP tokens they hold in their regular wallet, we're gonna multiply it by the total drip that's locked in the liquidity pool, and then divide that by the total supply of the LP tokens. And that gives us a pretty close estimate of if they were to go onto the DEX and liquidate everything, how many drip would they receive back? So that's, it's not gonna be perfect, but it's gonna give us a pretty good estimate for voting purposes, like how much drip do they actually control? Uh, so Wing Riders works a little bit differently. Um, they actually, um, so to do wing riders, we first have to get some of the same information, like how much drip total is locked in the liquidity pool. Now they have everything of theirs on a specific address that just gets reused. So we can look up the drip policy ID and the drip name on this particular address to get the total size of drip locked in that pool. And then we can get the total LP token circulating supply. Now this is a little bit different because they mint all of their LP tokens up front and they hold some of them on that contract address. And so they, you know, I've, I've talked to them, they mint a max value, uh, which is like the maximum eight byte signed integer value for how many tokens there are. And then they burn a thousand of them to start. And then what we're going to do is we're going to subtract off of that the amount that's sitting in the pool or on that pool address. So that gives us how many they've actually distributed. So that gives us kind of the total LP circulating supply. And then finally, we need to figure out when people hold their LP tokens in the wallet, um, how do we calculate how much drip they control? So it's kind of the same 
calculation here, we're going to multiply by the total drip in their liquidity pool, locked in that contract, and then divide by the total LP token circulating supply. So it's basically the same queries as with Sunday Swap once we get to this point. It's a little different to get the, uh, the total circulating supply. And then coming soon, I haven't done them yet. This is why I said it was in process. We're going to do uh, min swap, and then we may get into dealing with yield farms, maybe because that's a whole lot more difficult. So yield farms on uh, there's there's a currently a yield farm on wing riders. Uh, they do things a little differently. They don't like lock the LP tokens in the contract. They control it all with uh, datum and datum hashes to figure out who, uh, what wallets are, um, own the LP tokens, things like that. So we may be able to peel that onion, maybe not. Um, and then MinSwap, I believe, is pretty straightforward. Um, there's some of their data, which is, is locked in the datum hashes as well, but we, we should be able to figure that out. Anyway, just wanted to share an update on kind of what's happening in the world of governance, snapshotting, and tokens. And with that, nerd out.